The Bicolor Nanolux Evoque 2400B LED fixture promises a few innovations. A high output rivaling an HMI, increased flexibility with a clever way to navigate 15 amp or 20 amp circuits, and a new electronic system for tracking compatible accessories. Pair that with plus or minus 80 green and magenta tint control, which isn't always common in a bicolor fixture, and you have a light that is more than just its eye-popping output. Hi, I'm Graham Miller Sheldon, and here's my full review of the Nanlux Evoque 2400B, first unveiled at CineGear LA 2023, very much in prototype form at the time, the Evoque 2400B with a 2700K to 6500K Kelvin range priced at $6,999 with the case and with the promised output of a 4K HMI or 10K tungsten was impressive. But we left that show with tons of questions about how the Nanlux Evoque 2400B would work in practice. Could this fixture work off of household power in North America? Would it be a Bates plug only? Would it be backward compatible with other accessories previously released by Nanlux? Since then, we've seen similar 2400-ish wattage draw fixtures announced from the likes of Aperture and Godox. Since I haven't gotten my hands on the Aperture or Godox higher wattage offerings just yet, this review will take my experience with the Nanolux products into account from a director of photography perspective. The Nanolux engineering team had a choice. They could have aimed the Evoque 2400B at the pro-only crowd with a Bates plug, or left it open to more owner ops. In my opinion, Nanolux picked a great middle ground by shipping this unit with both bare ends and an Edison plug for use in the United States with a switchable 15 amp, 20 amp plug. More on that switchable plug in a moment. But shipping with bare ends gives you maximum flexibility to add whatever plug you want with minimal effort or electrical skills. Career gaffers and best boys will be fine with an Evoque 2400B with bare ends, and busy owner ops will appreciate a more turnkey solution with the plug of their choice, depending on region. After receiving the Evoque 2400B for review, I immediately had the opportunity to throw the fixture into use on a Netflix promotional video in Los Angeles for an upcoming series. On that first shoot, the intensity barely rose above 20% because, frankly, I didn't need it for interior shooting at 24 frames per second. It's that bright. Thankfully, I had several more weeks to really put the Evoque 2400B to the test. Okay, so this is the Evoque 2400B. It's a little bit bigger than the uh, lamp head of the Evoque 1200B, which you can see right here. So, you know, some size differences, but the lamp head being this large, 2400 watts, I mean, that's a lot of output. Obviously, combo stand here, not something we're gonna be putting on a C stand anytime soon. And then the power supply, also a little bit larger than the 1200 version as well. But I mean, if you've used any of the Evoke lights before, the controls all very similar. But you can see those electronic pins right here, which just tells the lamp head, okay, this is an accessory that's gonna work on the Evoque 2400B. You can turn that off in the menu. It takes just a couple seconds, but it still has that clicking sort of mechanism that if you've ever used, you know, a Bowens mount, the NL mount system feels a lot like that too. There you go. And then there's just this little blue toggle on the side, and that's just the release. I mean, this is balanced very well. So this is a fully unlocked yoke right now. I'm not touching it. It's not drifting forward. It's not drifting backwards. That's obviously a huge safety concern. So it's just very well balanced. I'm gonna lock it for safety. You have the IP55 rating right on the side. And then the reflector itself, the accessory on the front, lives in this little soft case right here. 
like a gigantic hat case. And then this is the flight case. A little larger and a little heavier than the soft rolling case that the Evoque 900C often ships with. So you now have several case options when it comes to storing and transporting the entire Evoque line. But really, it's a lot like all the other Evoque fixtures. If you've used an Analux Evoque, you know how to use a 2400B. It's just all a little bit larger, but that trade-off comes with more output. So, pretty cool. The flight case feels indestructible with plenty of interior foam protection and the ballast has protective rubber at either end. This whole kit could take hits and keep on cooking. There is also a handy image on the interior of the lid that helps with packing if you are renting the kit or unfamiliar with how to pack everything yourself. There is fan noise, although it isn't as much as I would expect given the size of the lamp head. My solution was to keep the fan in smart mode for the duration of filming over several shoots and audio never mentioned an issue. Granted, I never had a reason to move the Evoque 2400B three feet away from any lav or boom microphones. Now, a bit about accessories. Nanlux has decided to go with electronic contact pins for their Evoque 2400B accessories. That idea is reminiscent of Aries' approach with their quick lighting mount system for the orbiter fixture. I'll admit, I'm a little wary of proprietary electronic mounts that could be used to exclude third-party accessory manufacturers, something brought up as a concern with the RF mounts on the camera side. Still, Nanlux has assuaged these fears by allowing an easy turn off of the setting in the menu that requires accessories with these pins. The argument in favor of these pins is to guarantee compatibility and not risk melting or damaging an NL accessory that isn't specifically designed for the Evoque 2400B heat. There is also the possibility of future electronically controlled accessories, but those have yet to be announced. The Nanolux team also mentioned they're working to make these pins separately available for NL accessories that users might already own and to Chimera and DOP Choice for their own compatible products. No word yet on how to affix these pins or if they are available for an additional cost. So, what about power? This part of the review dedicated to power considerations will depend on your particular country, so please keep that in mind. In the United States, you are limited primarily to 20 amp circuits in homes. Still, generally, you can expect to run a single Airy M18 HMI off of a household wall outlet drawing roughly 1800 watts without much fuss. The Evoque 2400B, with a power draw of 2200 watts required to reach its full output, will not work on a 15 amp circuit at 100% intensity. For this, Nanlux has created a novel solution that allows this fixture to work off house 15 amp power or 20 amp power where necessary, simply with the flip of a switch. Nanlux could only provide me with a prototype for this switch, but the prototype worked as intended during testing. Output also scales with the power input. So if you are set to the 15 amp, 1700 watts side of the switch, the fixture still lets you select from zero to 100% when dialing up or down brightness. All of this is to say that with the Evoque 2400B, you have a more flexible fixture that isn't limited to a sound stage or dragging a generator around. Pretty cool. Nanlux has done a good job making their past 48 volt Evoque line ballasts interchangeable in the case of the 900C, 1200, and 1200B. But please note that the 2400B is 96 volts and won't work with those other fixtures. Now, let's move on to output and Kelvin handling in CCT mode. I would be remiss if I didn't give a special thank you to Rev Studio in La Jolla, California here for installing a dedicated circuit to allow this review to happen in advance of filming. How cool is that? The Evoque 2400B has two different output modes, constant with a lower power draw and max, top end of the power draw, and thus max mode is more likely to pop a circuit. 
I went ahead and tested the output in max mode using Lux and color handling in Kelvin of the Evoque 2400B at a distance of 10 feet, 3.048 meters, with my Siconic C700U spectrometer in the center of the beam. You do lose a little bit moving away from the center of the beam with this reflector, but generally it's a very even spread. Here are my results with a target of 5600K with the kit 45 degree reflector attached and the launch firmware installed. A result of 5733K with a target of 5600K is excellent, and the 37000 Lux 3430 foot candle value is fantastic. This is a very, very bright light. And now onto a target of 3200K. We do see a drop in output here, 32900 Lux and 3050 foot candles when compared to our 5600K results, but the CCT Kelvin accuracy is literally spot on at 3207 Kelvin. In general, phenomenal test results out of the Evoque 2400B. So, what about control? I have thoroughly covered the Nanlink app, now very much improved with consistent updates in past Nanlux Evoke reviews, and you can still control the fixture that way through integrated 2.4G Bluetooth. You also have DMX RDM, SACN, Lumen Radio, Timo2 CRMX, and ArtNet control. In my mind, that covers about 99% of the professional users in the marketplace. But feel free to hop into the comments if you can think of another lighting control protocol the Nanlux team should consider adopting. If none of the above control options work for you, Nanlux has even included a tiny remote control. How cute is this? Which might be best in solo owner op situations. You also obviously have access to physical rear control dials that work in exactly the same way as past Evoke models. They're very easy. So. Who is the Nanlux Evoque 2400B meant for? Considering we are about to see several high output LED sources hit the market as I'm saying this, we should give some thought to who the perfect user might be for the Nanlux Evoque 2400B. In the United States, the Nanlux brand is slowly becoming more prevalent on the rental side in larger markets like LA. A quick search of ShareGrid.com shows that smaller shops and owner ops are also steadily adding more Nanlux fixtures to their inventories. Why should we care about others adopting Nanlux fixtures? In short, the film industry remains a place where perception and what is popular is still considered for better or for worse. Producers being familiar with Nanlux as a brand means these lights are easier to bring on set because producers sign the checks. More Nanlux in larger markets means the fixtures are also easier to service if a unit accidentally get damaged. The $6,990 price tag and size of the Evoque 2400B kit means if you are a smaller to mid-sized production house, you will likely only have budget and space for one or two of these fixtures in-house at most. As a Freefly Ember high-speed camera owner, I was most interested in the light as a way to get better exposure at 4K while in studio. Speaking of Freefly Ember, we went ahead and shot a quick test at 1000 frames per second with a 50 to 100 Sigma Cine Zoom at T2.8. Big takeaway, no flicker. And we only needed to get the light to 25% output in max mode to get enough stop for the shot at 5600K. As an owner of both the daylight only and bicolor 1200 watt evoke fixtures, I want to stress that neither of those lights have been made obsolete by the Evoke 2400B. For one, the Evoke 2400B doesn't have a compatible Fresnel accessory yet, and those other lights do, along with the 900C. The Evoque 2400B kit is larger and less portable than its 1200 watt cousins. In short, consider if you need the output or the plus minus 80 green and magenta feature of the Evoque 2400B when purchasing. You might be fine with one or several 1200 watt fixtures instead. It will depend on the type of work you do. If anything, Hats off to the manufacturer Nanlux for giving us the ability to use this light on 15 amp or 20 amp circuits for maximum flexibility. Okay, now how future proof is the Evoque 2400B? 
As previously mentioned, I'm being told the Evoque 2400B will be priced at $6,990, and that pricing includes a case. At this pricing, we should expect this light to be a years-long part of the kit. I understand that bicolor isn't color, and full-color fixtures are where we are generally trending as an industry. But there's a case to be made that the majority of our work isn't shooting colorful Blade Runner sequels, and that daylight and tungsten are somehow present in 90% of shots we help create. I spoke with a gaffer recently who was trying to move all of his fixtures to full color, and I get that. But on a price per watt level, you are paying a premium on a color fixture that you might be leaving in CCT mode for the majority of your work. Now, your story might be different, but the trade-off when going for a color fixture is a cut to output. And sometimes you just need a light with punch. The Evoque 2400B has that. And the ability to dial in green or magenta tint gives it added flexibility in environments where you can't control every practical in the shot. For example, a gigantic mall, food court, or an exterior with multiple buildings in the deep background, also not in your control. In brief, consider how often you may need color-capable lighting in your work. When the RGB Airy Orbiter first came to market, it was $10,000 with the needed accessories. And that's a 500 watt light with a fraction of the punch of the Evoque 2400B. Food for thought. And now for some final thoughts. I've enjoyed watching Nanlux and their partner company Nanlite continually listen to feedback from the filmmaking community and adapt their designs to be more on set friendly. Shipping this fixture with bare ends, a switch that toggles between 15 amp or 20 amp, every imaginable connectivity option, including a little remote, and plus or minus tint 80 adjustment just guarantees the Evoque 2400B won't sit on the truck or in the SUV collecting dust on your shoot day. The cost of the Evoque 2400B, while pricey, on a watt to dollar basis, is actually more affordable than at first glance. And I'll argue that it makes sense as a years-long investment in an industry where there is constantly a new shiny piece of gear hitting the market. There you have it. That's my review of the Nanlux Evoque 2400B. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Rev Studio in San Diego for their help with this review. Go to RevStudioSD.com for more info on how to book their beautiful space.